Ah, good day, everybody. Um, we are in the second part of our analysis. So let's get started. Now I said we have the type of analysis. We have the fundamental analysis, we have the uh technical analysis, and sentimental. Hmm? This sentimental is not actually recognized by most people, but it's also a way of analyzing uh markets. Okay. Now take sentimental analysis is the art of taking financial decisions based on the possession of what other people will do. Hmm? Yeah, you don't need to read any chart or any white paper. So it's just like you taking advantage of what you think other people will do. That's what, uh, that's what the sentiment analysis is. Okay, okay you know, fluid, well, just like we all do sentiment analysis, but we don't know that we actually do it in real life. Now, let me give you, let me give you a real life example. Now, imagine if the federal government say there will be a ban on petroleum today. You immediately the news broke out. You see a lot of cars. Hmm? You see a lot of cars trying to go to various petrol stations to buy this petrol because they know by tomorrow there will be a ban on petroleum. Hmm? That's the way of analyzing what we have. You know, fluid that people will buy. You know, now let now assume that uh assume that there is a stock for petroleum. Probably there is a trading stock market for petroleum. You can easily buy immediately the announce the news and sell it back. But you should not feel that you, you get profit. So this is what sentiment analysis is. Hmm? Now, for instance, if you perceive that a lot of people will buy it, okay? So that's what sent analysis, sentiment analysis means. That is, if you perceive that a lot of people, a lot of trader, we buy a certain coin at a given time. You might want to buy it, or if you think they will sell a coin at a point, you might want to sell it also, okay? Just the same way if, um, Let's assume that, you know, I said the other example, the first example I use is if federal government buy petroleum. Now, you cannot imagine if there is a ban on uh, importing of phones, hmm? importing of phones, no flu weather, the scarcity, the scarcity of the phone. Hmm? So, you selling at that time, you can sell at any high price since you know it is not flowing. So, sentiment analysis is you knowing the perfect time to buy a coin using or using what other people will do, using the perception or the thinking of what other people will do. Okay. Or the perfect time you know that oh this news breaking out, this is the perfect time to sell. Mm -hmm. I get it. So I said sentiment analysis comes from the crypto influencer talking about a coin in a positive or negative way. Now those of you that are in crypto last year, May, you know fully that the major reason when the deal started was because of Elon Musk trying to Make a food about people that it's Bitcoin consumes power. Really, he said that you know a lot of things done. Hmm? So that's it. Now, now the major way you can see you can get this sentiment analysis is from Twitter or social media. But you know, Twitter is more uh is more wider and is what is more wider than other uh is more wider than other social media platform. You can't get this sentiment analysis from WhatsApp. You need to get it from the old girl and say. So can just let can just go to people like Elon Musk. Hmm? You can get sentiment analysis because even though people will still be like hey, they hate Elon Musk, they don't like him. If you tweet about a coin today, it will surely pump because people will buy it. Because people believe that he or she are uh, either he has so your she should he has a, he has a, um, people believe that yes, he has a share or he has invested in the coin too. Hmm? I've taken so many advantages of uh, Shiva of sentiment analysis, especially from this man. Hmm? There was a time that he made a tweet about Shiva Pop. He made the tweet about Shiva Pop. I had to buy it. And from one, I, the stuff rose, it rose from $1 to around $40. Before it starts, it's, it's even more than forty dollars. Before it starts dumping, right? So this is more. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. So same thing with time of can see. Can see. Can see. It post about people. Same thing about um Dutch coin last year May. Is it May or February? No, last year January. You made a post about Dutch coin. And Dutch coin did over 800 percent. 
So this is the thing. You know fully where that people are looking up to these people. You know, see his followers. See his followers. He has 71 million followers. Out of that 71 million, I'm, I'm very sure that half of it are into crypto. Hmm? No. I see it. So he, he post so when he posted about Dogecoin, when he posted about Dogecoin, hmm? Dogecoin was to eight hundred percent. In fact, the last time he posted about it recently too. And Dogecoin did like 13%, I think, or 20, 29%. So in sentimentalized, you get to wait for news like this. You get to follow them. Hmm? You get to follow them. You can see Tesla match by with Bitcoin with Dogecoin. You can see it. At this point now, let's check. Let's touch, let's check Dogecoin. Let's check Dogecoin. Let's check something. So, so you are sentimental. You know what the meaning of sentimental means? No? So, being sentimental, being is so I call it selfish. You know, so any definition of your sentimental is is fine by it. So let's let's check Dogecoin. I want to check it on. Um, so they've already started. Tesla has already started taking in Dogecoin. And please, Elon Musk is not the only place where you can get our sentiment analysis. You can get it from exchanges, and exchange can just say, "Okay, well, I'm listing this coin to so time to actually pump." But it depends on you to know when to buy and when to sell. If, if if Binance made an announcement to you that they are listing so 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 coin at a particular point in time, you know fully where that it come. That's just it. That's just, so I want to check. I want to check. Uh, Sorry for my network. I want to check something to compare to that. So let me check another website. Let me check another website. So let's continue. Sorry, my network is very poor here. Uh, I want to check the markets comparing to when Tesla posts this, when Elamos posts this. I want to change the, I want to check the market compared to it.
Now, this is the day candlestick, right? It shows that um, it shows that all these candlesticks they are seen, they form for a group. Now, it shows that all these candlesticks you are seeing forms for a day. So you can see uh, on January 12th, on January 12th, you can see this. Okay, let me clear out this. Uh, so you are seeing. Now, on January 12th, you can see, okay, January 11th, Dogecoin price is $0.14, right? Moving to January 12th, 0 0.15, January 13th. Now see January 14. See it. See the price. See how it's moving. January 14 it's moved to 0 0.21. It's moved from what? 0 0.16 to 0 0.21 dollar. Are you seeing it? And it was when the deposit deposit on January 14 too. So on that day, that's why you are seeing this long. I'm sorry, this long, this green candlestick. Let me show you. I see I'm zooming. This one that my mouse is. So when I said green means buy, right? It's pump. A lot of people buy at this particular time. It's rose. Hmm? And see, it's rose to what? 0 0.22. Okay. It's rose to 0 0.21 dollar from what? 0 0.16 dollar. So that means depending on about today, we have seen like 30, a bit, 30 or 40 percent profit. Hmm? So you can see. And it's on January 14. If you check the time, you can see 14 January 2022. So that's that's a way to do analysis. Mm -hmm. So you have to be you have to be very, very sentimental about it. If you are doing sentimental analysis, another way you can use it is you can do it is all this trending. If you click on trending, you see other people talking now. You can see other people are talking, is talking about Solana right now. Mm -hmm. Other people is talking about Solana right now. I see that people stop they are talking about Solana right now. I can see it. Mm -hmm. So you can also use that one. You can also use that one. So let's go to the technical analysis. Let's go to technical analysis. No. Now, technical analysis is the, is the process of choosing price history and patterns or trend to make predictions about the market. That is, you use what has happened in the past to make the prediction of what will happen in the future. Okay, right? So, just like you having supporting a team, you know this team, yes, they're always winning, 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 and they are likely to play another match tomorrow. The three, at least at some point to be very, very assured that yes, they are going to win. Okay? That's another instance. We use price, we use the issue of what has happened to it before to make predictions. So this involves a careful and insightful way of analyzing the market. Mm -hmm. We have to be very insightful. Another thing is technical analysis is most is mostly for short time trade. Fundamental analysis is for, is for a long time. I made mention of that in the first video. Let's okay. give it. One important thing was made about fundamental analysis is suitable for long time traders. So you can use uh, technical analysis for what? For short time trade, right? Now let's continue. Now, tools used in technical analysis. Number one is candlestick. Let me show you. Let me show you what this candlestick means. Now, this is candlestick. The green you are seeing here is the bullish candlestick. Hmm? The red you are seeing here is the what? Bearish candlestick. You understand? The red you are seeing here is the bearish candlestick. Hmm? Now, zooming in. Let me zoom in very well so you can see. Now, you see this tiny line. This tiny line. It is called the wick. I see each candlestick has tiny lines, you can see. So it depends on how much tiny they are. This tiny, are you seeing it? Hmm? So what you should know is that 
this indicates by this indicates sell. So that means if you are seeing a lot of grains like this, it shows that a lot of people are buying the coin and it is rising. Now you can see the one I, my mouse is, you can see it. If you check it with the price at the vertical line, you see 0.146, right? If I move to the next one, 0.155, you can see it's increasing 0.16, hmm? 0.17, 0.19, you can see how it rose. Now if I now move to the red, you can see this, this one is 0.12. If I now move to the red, you can see it's coming down 0.19. 0 0.18, 0 0.17, 0 0.16, you can see it. So this red shows that buyers exceed, I mean, this red shows that sellers exceed uh, the buyers. And this gray shows that the buyers exceed the sellers. So if you are seeing this gray, that means you are, you are having, if you have a coin, hmm? you, if you have a coin and you are seeing this gray, it shows that you are making profit. Hmm? If you have a coin before and it's showing this red, it shows that you're losing money, right? So that's what it means. Now, let me now explain uh, candlestick. Now, candlestick has, uh, op it has four parts. It has the open, low, open, close, high, and low. Hmm? It has the open, close, high, and low. Now, you can see it. Now, let's continue. Now, the open and close are the first and the recorded price of a given time. The high and low are the highest and the lowest and the highest recorded price. Now I see something. Let me let me zoom in very, very well so you can see. Trading is very, very interesting. Hmm? Now, you see this week. No, let me show you. Let me let me go to the one that has week. Yeah. You can see at this one, there's a very tiny week where my mouse is. Hmm? Now, this I said this two is week. W I C K week, right? Now this week. They are to they are the high and low. So this low is the lowest recorded price for, two, for January 22, which is 0 0.12. And if you go to the to the high, uh to the high, this shows the, the upper week rather. This shows the highest price recorded for the day. Mm -hmm. Now you can see the body. The body are this uh thing that has four corners. You can see it. You can see how my mouse is moving. They are four corners, right? Very good. Now, this down, the tip, not the not the vehicle, the tip, it shows it is open for the red, and at the top it is closed hmm? for the red. Just like no, for the top it is uh yes, it is open for the top, close for the down. So that means the price comes from up. And start coming down, coming down, coming down to reach to this point. So that's where the body is. Now, for the green, right? For the green, you can see the week. It also has a week. The week also this shows the lowest price recorded for the day, which is the low, and I the highest price recorded for the day. Now you see the body, you can see it has four corners. Hmm? Because if you are very observant, you see it's moving small, it's moving gradually. This tip shows that this is where it started. Then it's moved up it's at this point like this. I get me. So if it is the red, if it is the red, the bearish candlestick, it has to come from the top to the down. If it is the bullish, it has to come from the down to the top. So that's how they form, right? The reason why they are bear the bearish and the bullish is imagine a bull. You know, a bull is a cartoon, a, a milk cartoon that has on. If it's if, if a milk cartoon eats you. It always lays you up, and that's why the bullish is always when the, the green is always when the price is going up. Hmm? Now, for the bear, if, it's, if you have seen a bear, a bear will always knock you down. So that's why a bear is also representing when the price is going up. So, do you understand what I'm saying? So, it goes up and it comes down. Hmm? So do you understand what I'm saying? Now, let's go back to the material. So I hope you can understand what this candlestick means. So the bear is the negative price. Hmm? The bull is the positive. Is the, the bear is the negative price. The bull is the positive price. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, uh, so let's go back to the material. So I've explained the high and the low, right?
So first price of the day, lowest price of the day. So this is it, you can see it. The two, you can see the I and the I, they are the same for the red and the green. For, but for the, for, for the green, the open starts from the base to the top, it's closed. That is, it's going higher. For the red, the open starts from the top, it comes down, it's going, it's going down. So that's the close, right? Now let's continue. Now I said, the bullish candlestick, this is the green color, it usually shows you by education. This means whenever you see a green chart from it, it shows that the number of buyers exceeds the number of sellers at a given point in time. A long green candlestick indicates a very big buy order pressure. Hmm? See something. Okay, around last year, there was there was a high pump in price. So let me use, let me show you something. One month. Hmm? You can see, can see how this, can see how this is very, can see the green, can see where it started, 0 0.05, and it rose and rose and rose and rose towards, can see this, hmm? 0 0.44, you see it, mm -hmm. so it's rising. Now see something, this one is also rising, right? It also rose to 0 0.7, but this is weak, that is, the, the, the rate at which this one dump is very, very fast. Now, let me show you another thing. Man. Mm -hmm. At the week, like at this, for this one week, Bitcoin rules, let us understand, starting from Sunday to Saturday, this uh, Dutch coin rules from what? 0.372. Always check the price at the vertical side. At this vertical side, always check the price. Close for what? 0 0.35 is uh, right. It shows to what? It shows I it shows I add to this. You can see it's 0 0.737, right? So this is an indication for you that yes. Um this is an indication for you that this these things. Hmm? Now, now checking the red. You can see it's come from 0 0.5, it comes down, comes down, comes down to 0 0.35. Then it rose a little and still come down again. Remember I said the, the top of the red candlestick is the open. That is, for this week, this price started from 0 0.5199 and it drops towards 0 0.3, 0 0.3 dollar. Mm -hmm. So that means that's a negative price. The ne negative trend in price, they call it deep. They call it DIP deep. So you say you're in the deep, that means the, your coin is, is dropping. The bear is this red color, it shows an indication. So it means at this point in time, sorry, at this point in time, the number of sellers, this candlestick, the number of sellers exceed the number of buyers. At this point in time, the number of buyers exceed the number of sellers. So it's just like, let me make another example. Mm, just like you, uh, let us know that you sell, um, well, what, okay, let us know that you sell, you sell, you sell clothes, right? You sell, and you are the only person that sells clothes there. Hmm? You sell clothes there. And that pays a lot of people that make clothes. You know a lot of people will buy from you. Now, when you see you have a lot of buyers, you can actually increase the price, right? Actually increase the price. Because you know they don't have any option, they will still buy from you. Now imagine you that you are the only one before. Then three more people actually came as traders. They, they are sellers of the clothes you are selling to. You know that the buyers will have been dispersed. People will go to other people. People will go to other people. Then you putting your price at the higher price, putting your clothes at the higher price will not pay you. So you have to bring down the price. So that means number higher, higher, the higher the seller, the lower the prices. Right, and they are the buyers, they are the prices. So please get note of that. Now we are going next to how to read this candlestick. How do they form? How will you know the next candlestick that will come? How will you, how will you know the next trend? You can see they are not moving in a straight line. You can see 
up, down, up, down. Now let's check how to read it now. Now let's continue. Now, there's also a called trade lines. Trend lines shows an uptrend or a downtrend. Trend line shows an uptrend or a downtrend. Now let me use what people are mostly uh what people are mostly the one people that people know the most. That's BTC. Let me use BTC. Let me use BTC. Now, now see something. Hmm? See something. Can see there is a positive rise yet. See where my mouse is. Hmm? Can see it's rising. Now, how will you check? How will you check that? This is about how will you check the trend, right? How will you check the trend? Now, see something. How will you check the trend? Now, can see most people will buy Bitcoin. Yeah. Most people will buy a 69,000, and that's why it is good the way you, you are learning this before you actually get to be a big trader. Some of you will be like, Oh, Bitcoin is rising, Bitcoin is by rising, let me buy, let me buy. No, me, I don't buy coins unless I do my analysis. Now, people that bought Bitcoin at 69,000 here, which is 10,000 here, you know that if you buy your BTC at 69,000 here, now BTC is at 36,000, right? You see, you see this. You know fully well that you are at loss. That's just the truth. So if others are shouting, buy BTC, buy BTC is rising, I will not buy here. I wait for the price to come down before I buy. Now let's check the trend line. Trend, I say, you now I said trend line shows the increase. Now, before I continue, now no one thing. We have several types of candlestick based on the time frame. Now you can see this thing. See where my mouse is. This is one W, right? It means one week. That means each candlestick you are seeing is forms of one week. Now, each of these candlesticks. Now, if you check the time at the base, you see 20, 21, 20, 21, 11, 29, 0, 1, right? Come. Now, now, let me not draw the trend line. Hmm? Let me draw the trend line. You see this side. Okay, let's let's look for a trend. That is, is it going up or is going down? Let's look for a trend. So before I continue, you see this one week chart, right? Hmm? It shows that each candlestick deform for one week, right? Now let's go for the one day chart. You see it to be different from this. One. Can I see this another movement, right? This another movement. Can I see it? Can I see another movement, right? So this is trying to tell you that. Each of these candlesticks they form for one day. See, 20, see the time, 20, 22, 01, 22, right? This is 21. This is January 20, January 19, January 18. So each candlestick fall for one day. If I use four hours candlestick, four hours chart means each of these candlesticks they form for one hour. They, they form for four, four hours, Adam, sorry. The form for four, four hours, right? Now, let me use one hour candlestick. It shows that each of these candlestick form for what? For one hour. Now, let's continue. Okay, let's continue. Now, let me use four hours candlestick. Let me use four hours candlestick. Now, let me draw a trade line. Let me draw a trade line. As a trade line, I it, I can see it. This is a trend line, right? This is a trend. It shows the neck. You can see the price is coming down gradually, gradually to this point. Hmm? This is a trend line. That's a trend line. You can see. 
be a trendline. That is, this is a trendline that shows a downtrend. This shows a downtrend, right? As it shows a trend. Now let's look for the one that shows an uptrend. This one shows an uptrend, right? At least it is going, it is going higher. Uh, I uh, can see it. So you can see this trend line. You can see it. The price goes. This is. Higher I, higher I, higher I, lower 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 I, you can see, higher I, lower I. Pick another trend now. Lower I, lower low, lower I, lower low, right? Lower I, lower low, lower I, lower low, lower I, then another lower low here. I see. I see lower and lower. So that's what I'm interested. So this an option shows that their price is coming down gradually. Now imagine if I don't have trend like this. Imagine if I don't have trend like this. Because I want to be biased or I want to be stupid. Let me just do my back. Does it go with what the market is saying? No. Hmm? And you can see this new line that I just drew. It shows an uptrend, right? But does the market goes that way? No. So that means. This that means you have to draw your trade line according to what the market is, how the market is moving. Hmm? Now let's continue. So that's what trend line means. It shows an uptrend. This is a downtrend. That, that's why you see your price. The price comes from what 68,950 to what it's currently at hmm? You can see, you can see that that's the that's like <laughs> that's like half of it is gone, almost half of the of the all time I is gone, right? So let's continue. Please, let's continue. Now, image showing an uptrend. You can see these are not trends. You can see these are not trends. Hmm? That's where it goes. So just like this one. As it is a lot of as it is a lot of it's going upward, right? Now let's continue. And then it's all down with this also this also has been down trend. Hmm? I see that's a downtrend. But let's continue. Now, tools use main tools using technical analysis. The method one is what support and resistance. Hmm? Resistance is an area, is a price level, is an area of price level where sellers step in and push the price down. That is, no matter how much the price is going up, when it's reached there, it is permitted to come down, right? The price is always prepared to come down. Now, see something, see this place. You can see a resistance here. You can see as the price is going up, it's reached this point, it's come down. 
you do this point again. This point is what? Let me choose it. 66,504. It comes down again, right? It comes down, right? It's get another support here. That is, no matter, the price is already going up. When it gets here, it has to come down again. Another support, another resistance is 59,000. It comes down, right? It's still good. Now, at this point, it break it. That one is normal. It's normal in, in trading for your market to break your support and resistance. But at least we can see like, one, two, three. You can see like three less, three times that the that the price reach a system before coming down. All right? You can see that. Now let's continue. You can see that, right? Now see. So in other words, it's the region whereby price goes down, even if it is going up already. Now let's check for another support and resistance. Let's check for another support and resistance. Now, uh, using this in the market, you can, it's always possible for you to get several support and resistance at any given point in time. Now let's let's just now this up we are seeing is the resistance. This down is the support. Well, let me talk about this. I said is a price see the evolution. Is a residual whereby the price goes down even if it's already going up. Now I see see something. At this point, price is already going up. Hmm? It comes down. It comes down. Right? It comes down. It still went up again to this region. This is another resistance. This same resistance, but another point, it still come down again, right? Unless until it broke the support here. So this resistance is always a place where it's just like imagine yourself in your house. The house is then you throw a baseball, tennis baseball, and start bouncing it. You know, there's no way the price will go above the, the ceiling. So all this comes down and never it's the ceiling. Hmm? So the ceiling is the uh the price ceiling is the Resistance. Price is resistance. So that's what resistance means. So you can see here. Tell him talk about support. Then we then we find a lot of support and resistance areas. Let me talk about support. Now, before I continue, resistance is, a, is from because the boost, the buyers, they are really able to get control of the market and drive the price higher, causing the downturn to continue. So at this point, at this point, when it, it reaches the and comes down, it's because the sellers perceive the buyers. Hmm? It goes up again. At this point, again, the sellers perceive the, uh, perceive the buyers again, right? And let me continue. So I can see this is resistance. It has to come down. No matter how, the price has to come down again. Support, you can see. Price has to go up, right? This is another support now. This time, this image is trying to tell you that there are cases where the support return resistance or where the resistance return the support. Now, at this point, the second layer hmm, this is a support at this resistance. That is, at this point, is a support, but at the previous point at the back is a resistance. Hmm? So that means whenever a line, whenever the market breaks a support, the support will always form the resistance at another very point in time. So this one, you can see this one is a support, but it has been broken down, right? You can draw another line. And you can continue the line. Right, you can see. So this this was a this line, this second line, this was a support before. But but since the market it, since, the, since the market has broken the support, it has to come down. Then it turns the resistance. You can see at this point, it comes down again. So as the market is going, as the market is going, I'll be expecting this one to rise. Let me show you.
how they fit in this one to rise. Hmm? Let me use another menu of drawing. No, it's will still drawing people. Let me just do it here. Now you can see this is the support that we draw the work on. This is support that we draw the work on. And this is the resistance we draw the work on. Can see when the price reaches, it has to come down. Then you start constructing, reach here again, come down, reach here again, and come down. So it's unable to break this resistance, right? Now, now let me draw our support again. The chart is still the same thing, it's just the interface that I have. The chart is still the same thing. Yes. Just to come. Now, this support, this is this was the support I drew the other point. Right, you can see it. The price reached. Now I said, for, let me explain support. Now support is the level where the price finds the floor. This means that the buyer step in and push the price up. So you can see at this point, the price rose from what forty five thousand five hundred. It rose to what? Hmm? So the buyers step in and push the price up at the support level. So the support level is the price floor. The resistance level is the price floor. So just like you bouncing the ball, the ball has to hit the ground. The turning ball come back again, hit the ground, come back again. You can see it. Ready. Now, in this case, support turns resistance. You can see it. Resistance turns support. Hmm? Resistance for support. Now, another similar case is happening. So let me just draw the line. Let me just draw. So I would be expecting my price to keep on rising, rising, rising. It's not that it will rise just straight. It may rise straight or it may rise up and up. But I would be setting my price to reach this point. I'll be expecting my price to reach this point. To reach this point. Hmm? I'm setting my price to go rise to reach this point and then comes down again. I'm setting my price to reach this point and then comes down again. I see. So as the price goes up like this, I'm expecting it to reach this point. So as the price goes up, I'm expecting it to reach forty-four thousand dollars and could start coming down again to where it started. Right. So that's where that's what support and resistance means. But let's do for other support. Okay, sorry. For other support. Now, 
Let me look for another support resistance. There are so many supports. Now, don't forget that your, your support and stack can also come in the trend line. Can also come in the trend line, right? You can see it. Can also come in the trend line. Can also come, you can see it. I see it, the price goes up, comes down, goes to this point again. This point, you can see this point. Hmm? The amount is comes down again, bounce here, goes up again. Um, then reach this support, this resistance again, comes down. You can see it. So that is what support is. Let's do for another one before it moves. It can be your, I said, it can be your option too, right? Also, be here uh, again. I can see one support. Let's see it. I see it. Price is going up. Mm -hmm. Bounce, reach here, bounce back, come down here, bounce up again. Then it starts, it continues to stop change, right? So that's where support is. Drawing a good support at this time to always help you to make right decision. So now let's make it past kinds of it. Now, if I had a BTC is rising, right? BTC is rising. It's, it's rose to, it doesn't matter, it rose to, um uh, 40,000. I was not able to buy it when it was 41,000. Then it rose to 40,000. Right? I will not buy it then. I'll make sure it comes down. You know, you can see it rose to what? It rose to 40,000. I will not buy it there. I'll wait for it to come down a bit too. It comes a bit to 46 from 48. Right? It comes a bit to 46. Then I will buy. Now, when I buy here, I know fully where it's going on. Then it goes up, it's reaching my resistance level. From that 46 that I bought, it goes to 48, 40, 55 rather. Is a profit, yes. No matter how small, how big it is, it's a profit. I will sell it again. I wait for it to come down a little. From that 55, it comes to 53, I will buy, right? So, so what my resistance will always, the usefulness is to show you when to buy and when to sell. So it is always better to sell at the resistance level and buy at the support level. That's the only, that's technical advice. That's the technical, that's how to do your technical analysis very, very fine. Now let's check this place too. I think I can see a support line, okay? You can see a support line, you can see. And that's why you you will be getting clear to the reason why you are buying coins when it is rising and selling it when it is you are buying coins when it is dipping and selling it when it is rising. So this will help you. Right? So let us know that ah, everybody was just clamoring, oh, BTC is rising, oh, BTC is rising, oh, BTC is rising. At here it is 43,000. Check the, always check the vertical axis, right? It rose to I will, since I, if, I can, if I'm not able to buy it at 43,000, right? I'll make sure. You can, uh, 
I'm not able to buy at 43,000. I mean, for 4,000, rather. I will make sure, and it's okay. BTC rules. I was not able to buy at this point. I was not able to buy at this point. Hmm? I was not able to buy at this point. I will not buy at this point. I will not buy at this point also. Can see this it has rose almost four thousand for seven thousand. I will not buy there. I wait for it to come down to my support level, which is what for four again before I buy. So, so that I will make profit. So, if others are saying that buy BTC, buy BTC, I will just go to my analysis. I will check it. Okay, this is not a good buy. See, no matter how much the coin is rising, it will always come down. That's one thing. A coin has a buy the time to go up and the time to come down. So it is better to buy when it is coming down. So I will not if, I, if I'm able to buy it, I will not buy it. I wait for it to come to my support level, then I buy. Hmm? So once I buy it from forty four thousand, it now rose to like fifty thousand. Then I will not sell at this point. I will sell at this point. See where I recycled. I will sell at that point, right? Now I know that I've already done the resistance. Me saying at that point is not. It's not a loss for me, it's a profit. Mm -hmm. No matter how, even if it is continue going, at least I know that at this particular point, I have made profit. So, assuming that I bought one old BTC, that means I've made like $5,000 profit. Mm -hmm. And this is where all these big, big waves come in. So, I will sell at the resistance, I will buy at support. So, please take note of that. Now, let's move on. Now, one time you need to know, there's also we call overbought reversal. Hmm? Overbought means high demand of the coin. And so it leads to increase of the price. Oversold means what? Low demand of the coin at least to the increase of the price. So it's just like you, um, I would like it. Let us know that there's a put. Hmm? There's a put that is trending. You know, the only school that came, there was a time to laugh on him, which it's in him, but I said that thing. Now, the time, at the time of that trending, they always high demand. So that's why you see them very, very expensive. Because there are a lot of people demanding, demanding, demanding. So that's what I bought. Now, it's not got to point that the trend now is starting. Those that bought the cloth are trying to sell back. That's what I So that is, a lot of people are not trying, they're not using the cloth to go check it back in. Or oh, it has the trend has already gone. They're not trying to sell it back. Then there will be a lot of sellers because there will be a lot of buyers. Then there will be a lot of sellers, and that means low demand of the coin. That is, people are not using demand for the coin. So any price you need it, you just sell it and go off. This overbought and oversold. We are going to use it now because it is actually going to increase. So now let's go. Common uh technical difficulties. There are so many technical difficulties. It's apart from that support and resistance, but these are the ones that I believe they are very, very essential. They are the most common, they are the most used. Now, what are chemical indicators? There are matrix, there are mayonnaise, there are matrix used in used to gain additional insight into the price action of an asset. Price action is to check what will happen to an asset, right? So, technical indicators make it easier to identify patterns and spots. Buy or sell signal. I promise what you're talking about here as well. Relative stress in this, which is very, very good. Bolivia bound, such RSI moving averages. Okay. Let's continue. Now, restraint in this. Restraint in this. This shows a scale of 0 to 100. Okay. It only shows a scale of 0 to 100. Okay. Now, that scale. From zero to 30, it shows a good time to buy. It shows that the coin is at oversold level. A lot of people has done the coin, it has go down in price. So it is a good buy, right? Now from 70 upward, it shows an overbought level. That is a lot of people have bought the price, they have bought the, the coin has already pumped. Now let me now divide before I go into the practical use. Now, I said it's a momentum. Hmm? Method indicators that show whether an asset is overbought or over. So that is, it always goes up and there's always fluctuating. Some traders to tell is an oscillator. Yes, it's also an oscillator. Now I said it has a scale of zero to 100. 
zero to thirty shows the asset is oversold. But this, there was there is no demand of the coin. Other people are sold and sold, and the, so zero to thirty shows that the price is oversold, and the price is about to rise soon, right? So seventy to hundred shows that what this asset is overbought, and the price is about to fall soon. So, so now let me show you the particular is five point two. Now you see this beside your 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 mobile view beside this. You see this arrow going right and left, left and right. Click on it. Okay. You see the search button. Just search for RSI. I see it's very straight in this. Click on it. Very good. Now you can show it. Hmm? Now. now you can see the scale here. You can see the scale at the vertical side. You can see the scale. Start from zero to hundred, but you can only see what twenty to eighty. That's also not bad, but the risk is zero to hundred. Now, whenever the stuff is, uh, whenever is, I said, when it is zero to 30, is a good buy, right? When it is zero to 30, is a good buy. Hmm? And when it is 70 to 100, it's a good sell. So when you're, when it's 70 to 100, it's a good sell. Now let's make that cash for the rate. Now I've activated it, now let's go. Let's go. I'm oh, sorry. But this is a mistake. Now, let me go. Hmm? Yeah, let's make use of the RSA. Oh, sorry. Now, see this one. Hmm? Can see it changed to my arrow. Now check it. It is what 62, 61, right? Okay, let me do that. Let me come here. You can see this one. It's our 72. I said when it's at 70 to 100, it's a very good time to sell, right? So my RSI is a 72, 73. If you chase it to this point, if you chase it to the arrow, it has already changed itself to the chart, to the candlestick. Then let's trade it. Now you can see it is at $51,000. Hmm? Now that means it is at oversold, it is at overbought, and you to sell. I've made enough profit. And if now coming down, see this down, it's our 28. I said zero to 30 is a good buy. It means the asset is at what oversold. Can see it has gone down. Hmm? It has gone down to 28. Now see this 28. See the see where it's changed to from 50 what? From 51,000 when it has by 72 to what? 45,000. When is that what? When is that my 28? So I will buy here hmm? and I will say here. I will buy when it's at zero, between zero to 30. I will say when it's above 70. Hmm? So if I'm selling here, I'm selling at 51,000 dollars. If I'm buying here, I'm buying at what? If I'm buying here, which is at 28, I'm buying at what? For 66,000 dollars. Can see the difference? Hmm? Then it's five thousand dollars. So I'll be waiting. I always if you're here, I always stay glued to my RSI. So I will know where to buy and where to sell. Hmm? Don't buy a coin when it's at 70 or 70, 70 upward. And don't sell a coin when it's at 20, 30 downward. Please make use of it very well. Now let's use one hour chart and check. Let me use one hour chart and we will see how this thing moves. Now, now see something. New. See the RSI now. Now, where you read where the RSI is, you check this place where my I can see RSI 14, where the mouse is, right? It's only show you need it. Let me take away the mouse. Can see coin is at 41.23. Hmm? So 41.23. 
I'll wait, I'll rather wait for it. If I'm buying the coin, I'll rather wait for it to come down to 30 downward, right? Or if I if I have it, if I, if I want to buy it, I'll rather wait for this RSI. The RSI you are seeing. Let me show you. This RSI, the one I saw just now. So you can see, you can see that please. Hmm? You can see this please. Okay, you can see that please. You can see it's 41 points, it's not at nine. I'll wait for it to come down to, I'll wait for it to come down to 30 before I buy. This, this is one miniature too, you should be able to use the real life experience for this guys. So, push. let me draw a support and resistance level with it. So, I'll make my support here. What was supposed to be there? Hmm? So, I'm setting the price. Now make my assistant to be here. Now the RSI is now 36 points. Okay, 34.3. I'm waiting for it to come down to 35 by hmm? 33. So it is telling me that it is still over. It's going to over soon now. Now it's at 30. Hmm? I can buy at this point. It is safe to buy at this point. Right? I can buy at that point. I can buy at that point. Still waiting. Now, since I buy at that 30, I'm expecting it to, the price to go up like this. Now, the price is continue going up. Now, you see. Now, let me take you with this one. The price at which you draw our line is. Um, Let's say 35. Let's say, let's say 35,000. So, no, let's say 35,048. So, let me take this one. That's five thousand four thirty. I'm expecting the price to go higher now. Since I bought at thirty, I bought at thirty-two. If I can sell back, I will wait for the price to reach seventy. You are at one. You are at one minute chart, so the price will definitely go in the next two three minutes. I'm expecting it to go up, to go up back. There are times whereby your RSI can go below thirty. I even go into, but I know that if I buy a dollar region of 30 downward, by the time it goes higher, I'll make my own profit. Hmm? When it goes higher, I'll make my profit. So let's just relax. That's it. Nice. That's the best. This is the best time for me to buy. This is the best time for me to buy. This is the best time this is the buyer at five thousand three ninety. When is that twenty nine metrics in a in my RSI? So let's make the calculation. This is the buyer buy one OBT seller. That's five thousand three ninety. Hmm? We wait for you to reach. A new RSI, higher RSI, if I buy, if I sell. 
That's 5,000 to me now. Those are that buy, I bought one for BTC. I want to trade this very fast. Even though really fast, can be a whole day. But I was in one hour chart because of the length of this video. So. So I bought at at nine at five thirty nine. You can see the RSI is going up gradually. Going up gradually. So actually, so I'm already getting profit. That's five thousand three ninety is at is now at that's five thousand four four nine. I will not sell now. I wait for it to continue going now. Now check this point. This is where you check it. You see the the stuff going higher. Check the price. You can see it's moving. It's moving. And for the sake of our uh of the length of this video, I'll just try to cut it short. But the time we stop now is that we stop at it's not at three five three nine and it was three five four three four. That means that's for four dollar day. You can see this RSI is still continuing rising. To rise and rise. So if I bought at RSI less than 30, I will try and sell it at RSI close to or greater than 70. That's how to use RSI. You buy when it is low, you sell when it is high. You buy below 30, you sell. You can see where you can read the RSI. You can see this arrow. You can see my mouse. And let's continue. So to the next one, Bollinger Bands. Hmm? This is an indicator that shows when the price of an asset is about to expand or done through a strong expand. Right? Bollinger Bands help us to determine whether prices are high or low on a relative basis. Uh, we are told that this Bollinger Bands was developed by John Bollinger. The major thing for this data band is it shows the volatility. It shows when the market becomes volatile, the bands widen. During less volatile, the bands contract. Okay. Let's continue. You go to your indicator, you search for the linger band. Try to get it. Okay. I think this now. This with the gamma is the same thing. It tells us the strength. Okay. Let's see. So let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. Uh, but the is telling you that when the size um when the size of, of your margin you can see this bullet see this bullet you can see their sizes and this and these sizes are greater than each other they are they are wider than each other this is tiny this is wide this is tiny this is wide now they are trying to tell you that whenever you see a strength the tiny strength it shows the market is spreading up is about to come now see this one the strength here is more greater than the strength here. You can see the strength. Hmm? You can see the, time, the lines are, you see if you check this line, the strength here compared to the strength here, you see really whether this one is more tiny than this. 
So whenever you see the, this long string, it shows the market is about to explode, it's about to rise very high. So you want to be sure you can just connect your RSI with it. You can just use your RSI with your, you can use your RSI with your Omega band. Now don't forget this is the point I chose. Hmm? This is the point I chose. You can see it's tiny. Now so tiny that by the time it continues, it explodes. So by the time it was tiny, it was at one thousand dollars. Let's see, at one thousand dollars. Now it explodes. It explodes. Price explodes to what? Forty-nine thousand dollars. And that's forty-nine thousand dollars. Forty-one thousand. That's eighteen thousand dollars different. So if I bought one BTC. At this point, I will have seen eighteen thousand dollar uh, profit, right? Now, see, see this please. I see the the arrow chases it to here. So, if you use your bigger band, it is very good if you use your what, your RSI with it. So you can see at this RSI, it's showing what, showing thirty point four two. And I put the thirty downward shows a big time. Okay. So you understand. So always use a mega band with your RSI. Okay. And let's do for another one. Okay. So it's, it's, so mega band shows volatility. Now see this one. You can see there's even a greater shrink here. Hey, hey, very good. You can see how strong. So if you see all this greater, greater shrink, it's trying to tell you that. The price will come very soon. Try and buy, 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 buy. Are you getting it? So you see this data stream. You can see, see this data stream. So you want to be very sure you can use your eyesight. It's not necessarily sure your eyesight. I don't use your eyesight. I use it some, only some of the times. So when it's shrinking, then you need to buy. Then you buy and it's called crazy. So that is how to use eyesight. You look up on. Now, Stouch RSI. Hmm? This one works like this RSI, but it is more sensitive than Stouch RSI. Hmm? Can see. It's more sensitive. It says that this one is always going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. You can see it. You can see it's similar to RSI, right? It's similar to RSI. It's similar to RSI. It's similar. Now, what this one does is this one, let me explain it. Hmm? It's, it's similar to RSI, but it's more sensitive than RSI. It's a type of indicator that goes up and down and below the center line. Now, this is center line. Hmm? Center line is the, is at the 50. There are some person that was, no. Now, that's where my, where my, uh, where my mouse is, you can see it. Center line is always at 50. Hmm? Now, when it when it goes down, it's telling you that it's about to go. Now that's the best time for you to go to buy. When it goes up, that's the best time for you to sell. Okay. But it's always better for you to compare to use other indicators with this uh, stock RSI. But this one is always very very sensitive. Okay. Now it's trying to tell you that this is going up, going up. So. Because it's going up. so I'm expecting this that when it goes up to the region to come down, okay? it's still coming down again. I see it. Okay, very good. That's how this touch as I was. So it means 
20 represents 0 0.2 on the other side screen. 20 represents. So this 80 is 0 0.8. This 20 is what you got. Can see it. You check the side. Can see it's a form of it's like a form of the 10.9. Can see it. So 80 is just like 80 divided by 100. 0 0.8. So this is you should know when to opt in and when to opt out. Now moving averages. This one is very, very interesting. We have the two types of averages. Moving averages smooth out price action and make it easier to spot. It's make it easier for trader to spot macro trend. Hmm? So we have the simple moving averages and the exponential moving averages. Now the exponential is more um is much more useful to me than the simple. And let me now explain this. The exponential shows a crossover. Now let's check this image before we do and use it. It's telling you that let me zoom in. Okay. Let me zoom in. Now see the, see where my mouse is. Telling that when there's a cross between the red and the blue uh, blue lines that are moving, when there's a cross between them, and the uh, candlestick is book that cross, that means it's telling that there's a the market is about to pump very high. You can see there's a you see where they circle, two lines cross each other, and the candlestick is above those above that crossing. So it's trying to tell you that buy, buy, that's the best time to buy. That is just the best time to buy. So let's continue. Now, see this place for the bearish. It shows that when these two lines cause each other again, and they are kind of still under it, it shows that we are going to do a bearish trade. That is, we have to sell. That is, the market is about to dip. And let's continue. Let me, let me take out this one. Okay. Now let me use the uh PMA cross. No. Let's look for where they cross each other and let's look for where it. Okay. Now let me zoom in. Let me zoom in. Now there's a cross here, right? And they are kind of still condemn it. So you can see what later happened. There are drops in price. If that one is not clear enough, see something. There's a cross here, right? And you see. After the cause, you see a lot of green candlesticks. So at this cause, it is what forty-two thousand dollars. After after the four cause, after it shows forty-four thousand dollars, right? So you can see whatever the cause and the candlestick up up end, it shows that is a pump. The pump is coming now. Let's continue. Let's look for more. Let's look for more. Let's look for where the cause now. This is just perfect. See where the cause is here. I see candlestick down. You can see there is a negative trend. So now they put each other, their candlestick under it. It shows that the market is about to dip. Mm -hmm. Now see, see here again. They cross each other and their candlestick above the above this course. It shows that the market is about to pump and it's actually pump. Pump for what? Forty-six thousand dollars to what? Forty-nine thousand dollars. Now let's continue. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. See another thing. There's another course here, right? Another course here. And they are kind of still condemning. What happens? They all come down. Come down for one. For 9,000 towards. For 5,000. So let's look for more. This, I love this in Bitcoin mode because it's always very, very easy. Now, see this piece. See where they cross each other. And they are kind of still condemning. What does that mean? Hmm? 
stones it and there is a deep. And actually, the deep actually occurred. The price actually came down gradually. Okay? So whenever there is a cause and candlestick around that, it shows there, there will be a downtrend. Whenever there is a see, see this course, let me zoom in again. See this course. Hmm? You can see the account candlestick over there. It shows that what the market is about to pump. And actually, there was actually a pump that actually occurred. So that's how to use EME. Hmm? That's how to use EME. So now how do you know if the market will do? Now, how do you know if the market will do? If means a great or a minimal or minimal dump or sell from beer traders. Now, there's so you can check. You check it from the Bitcoin dominance and what's total market cap. Now, as you said, you need to register. Trading volume, trading videos, come. Check the market site. Right? Now, let me start with simple. Now, in this market, in this trading view, just search for BTC. That is Bitcoin dominance. Now in this one, hmm? and now I said you can look into Bitcoin dominance and total market cap. You go back to the website again. Um, Right, this one is such to the stupid market cap is such to the I advise you to use total two. That is total market cap of all the crypto industry, excluding BTC. Those are the two things you need. Now, is it this BTC dominance and this total? total they are one and opposite. That is when BTC dominance is going up, when the chart is going up, the market will start to go down. That is when you see the rate. And when the start market, when the BTC the, uh, dominance start going down. Market start going up, so they work in, in a different in the opposite. Now, see this thing. This one. The reason why there is a deep market there is because of this one is rising. This BTC deep is rising. Okay? You can see this one is rising. You can see if you check the market going up 17, yeah, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I see it's rising. Now, whenever this BTC Dominance is rising. Okay. The whole market cap will be going down. This is where I track it. People that are in my group, we they this is how you know. I've already given them the information that BTC is coming down. BTC is, is the market will draw will down very soon. Now let's go to this one. Now I said you work in an opposite way. Right? No. Now, this is the whole crypto market excluding what? Whole crypto market excluding uh, BTC. Now, you can see it is coming down. You can see all this range. It is coming down. Right? It is coming down. So, this is to tell you that. You can see how it's coming down. This is to tell you that, yes. Um, this is to tell you that, yes. The market is coming down gradually. It's coming down. That's why you are seeing it. You can see the deep. I say it comes down very, and this one is going up. So BTC dominance is the opposite of what is happening in the market. So if this one is going up, so I'm expecting BTC, I'm expecting this this dominance to reach 
this 47.46, okay? I'm starting to use this for example before I start coming back. And that will show you a very, very bad market. Hmm? Now, see this one now. Now, see something here. Hmm? If you remember fully well that in May 2020, there was a deep caused by Elon Musk. This, now let's check. This was when this, the deep started, 19 of May. Hmm? Time of 19 of May. And see how it goes up. That was when BTC was now done dipping very, very bad. The new market is dipping. I see how it goes. It comes down here. Hmm? It goes a lot. It comes down here. It goes a lot. So it's already taking the support. So it does it, it looks like they are manipulating the market. No, technically, I don't believe they are manipulating now. It is what is going to happen. Hmm? Can you see? Now, when it got to start coming down. And since the style coming down, that's when you start seeing our greens. That's when you see the market start pumping. Start pumping, right? It goes up again. You continue the dip, start coming down. So, so by the time I told my student that the mark when it's reach here, I already told him that might be okay. So because I know it has reached a support level here. This is the support level that it's picked. Okay? the support level now it goes up. Now I believe I want to believe that this thing is still going very very well. I want to believe that there is still more deep. Okay? So I will not buy now until I reach probably this level or this level. Probably I reach only for six percent or eight or seven percent. Okay, I cannot see a very bullish market. Right? So that's how to check. So with the indicators I just teach you now, you can use it to check. Can see all these indicators. Can see what I've used. I've drawn my lines, the support and resistance lines. Can see it first broke the first support. It broke another support. Hmm? It is. I actually, I actually love the way this dip is happening because you get to buy all of these coins at a very cheap price. So that's why I'm not bothered about this dip. Hmm? And I hope I've shared you something very, very important today with this video because. So the two things you check to know if the market dip is happening or if the market pump is happening is what BTC dominance or what total crypto market cap. Both to what trading market pump. So that's all right. How do you make money from the dip? Make money from what futures trading. The video of futures trading has already been uploaded. Maybe those are paid and uh, put the exclusive asset to it. So these are the only two ways you can do it. You can do it in particular ice. You can do it in future trading. 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 You can do it in future trading.